Today I'm going to show you how to install a set of grease fittings or zerk fittings on a, a set of stabilizer links. Uh, these are stabilizer bar links for uh, Hyundai 2003, but uh, basically you can do this with any stabilizer link that, uh, you know, for any car, as long as you have the right links and uh, you follow the, the steps I show you in this procedure, it should be possible for you to put these on any stabilizer link that you have. So again, I'm not, you know, there'll be some specifics to these parts, but uh, you know, these parts, stabilizer links are, uh, you know, a standard fare in most uh, suspensions uh, out there. Uh, so the Hyundai 2003 Santa Fe, well, you know, these are the links for them. Now, why would I want to do this? Why would I want to put grease fittings on a perfectly brand new stabilizer link? Well, I'll show you why. I'll take, I took the boot off the, this link here and just to look at the ball joint and I noticed that the ball joint barely has any lubrication in it at all. So let me zoom in on that for you. There we are looking at what's uh, underneath the boot. This is the driver's side, but it doesn't really matter. The passenger side is be the same. You can see here, there's barely any grease on it. Um, I mean, it is lubricated, but just barely. And I'd like to be able to put more grease into the actual ball joint uh, periodically. Usually I'm gonna do this every ball, sorry, every oil change. And I, you know, short of taking the piece off, taking the boot off the uh, ball joint and then lubricating the top, which is all you'd be doing is putting grease on the top. Uh, that's, you know, the only way you'd be able to put any more lubrication into this ball joint. And you, you know, when you do that, you're not really getting the back of the ball joint. So, uh, by putting these fittings on the back of the ball joint, you'll be able to squeeze, uh, grease throughout the whole ball joint into the boot itself. And I will show you how that all works after we're done, but it basically it'll allow you to lubricate the entire ball joint, uh, periodically and keep it nicely lubed and, uh, Hopefully that'll make it last a little longer, a lot longer, hopefully. And that's why I'm going to put the Zerk fittings on the back. Orientation is important. Uh, the reason is, at least on my vehicle, the Hyundai Santa Fe 2003, uh, because if you don't orient these uh, Zerk fittings in the right position, uh, you won't be able to get your, your the tip of your uh, grease gun on them. You just won't be able to, or it be a real uh, pain to do so. So. The way I've got them set up here, this is the, the passenger side. It allows me to put the grease, to turn the wheel all the way to the driver's side. And uh, basically then I can hook on to these uh, two fittings from uh, the, the rear of the tire and uh, lube them up. Now, again, it, this is specific to my vehicle, but if you're doing it on your car, just take your, your, your stabilizer links and you know, put them next to where you're gonna, or you're right next to the current ones, and, and look at the orientation, make sure you got the right side on the right side, and then determine which way you want these uh, grease fittings to go. Whether you want a 90 degree, which is what I'm using, these are the 90s. Um, you can use a 45, you can use a, one, uh, a 180, which is straight, um, you know, whatever you need. But basically make sure you get the orientation correct so that when you uh, drill these out and put them on, they're facing the right way. That's another thing that you need to consider as well. And I'll show you what I mean. On these grease fittings, let me zoom in. Okay, you see that these grease fittings have a couple of, I've got a washer and a lock washer on there on this side. And on the other side, I have just two washers. And the reason I have only two washers on this side and a lock washer on the other side is just for thickness. I wasn't looking for the locking, uh, you know, uh, capability of the washer. I was looking for the, the spacing to get this right so that it faces in the right direction and it is snug. Now another reason why those washers are there, I'll show you what the reason for that, on my flat bar, you can see that when I thread this through to through the, the bar, it goes through well, all the way through, it sticks out the bottom. Well this is a four and a half, almost five millimeter uh, chunk of metal. It's very, very thick. So what you have on the back of your ball joint is not nowhere near that. It's probably about a third of that thickness. So what happens is when you put this through there, you're going to be making contact with the ball joint itself and then restricting the movement of the ball joint. So I'll show you what happens there uh, on the actual ball, ball joint. So I've got this correctly spaced here. I know this because I got full motion of the ball joint and I test that after I put the fitting in there. But if I take these two washers out of there 
and drive this uh, fitting all the way down, it'll make contact with the ball joint and restrict the movement of this ball joint. And then you won't be able to go forward and backwards or anything anymore because this will lock onto the ball joint. What will happen if you don't understand that that's happening or you make that happen, you don't test it to see that it's free, is that the ball joint will shear this, uh, the bottom of this uh, fitting uh, probably damaging the ball joint and the fitting itself. So you don't want that to happen. So that's another reason to have the washers. Uh, but primarily for me, well, that's reason number one, I don't want to hit the ball joint. Number two, it gives me uh, the ability to play with how deep uh, I go down on this uh, joint to get this uh, snug in this direction. So like I said, on, on one side I used a thick locking washer and a regular washer. And on this side I used just two washers and that worked uh, perfectly fine either way. And I'm not restricted at all, okay? So if you have issues with that and, and your, your fittings are too deep for the actual joint, uh, another option would be to grind down the actual fitting, uh, just, you know, file it down or use, you know, whatever to uh, sand it down and get it to be less thick. Then you can adjust the, you know, basically go deeper without hitting the ball joint. Uh, again, up to you how you do it. I use washers, work perfectly for me. So, uh, next thing to do here will be to actually drill out the unit or show you how I'm going to drill this out. Now, first thing, first tool I use for drilling always uh, is going to be a center punch. Basically, what I do is I take the center punch, I go down on, on I find more or less, I eyeball the center, or you can find what the center is yourself, and then I put a center, I put a punch in the center. Uh, this uh, allows me, allows my drill to be guided correctly and not skate. Also, it helps to save my uh, uh, drill bits and, uh, you know, it, it make them last longer and give me a more accurate drill. So let me uh, punch a hole in that and then uh, we'll go from there. So there's a little divot created by my center punch. Um, you want to do that on uh, both sides near the, you know, in the center, preferably. Uh, it looks pretty well centered to me there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but near the center or as close to the center as you can get it is, is great. And do, I'm going to do that on both sides. And after we're done that, we're going to go to the drill press, drill out a small hole as a pilot hole, and then slowly build the uh, uh, hole up or drill the hole out until it's a 7 30 seconds. And I'm going to start with a 1 uh, drill bit and work my way up. I'm um, not going to use every single drill bit in, in the, on the way up there. Probably skip two or three in sizes until I get to the 7, uh, 30 seconds uh, uh, drill bit. After that, we're going to tap it out. Uh, and I'm going to use, like I said, the, drill, the uh, drill press to do that. But you don't need to. Uh, the other thing you need to know when you're going to tap this out, again, I'll put a, a link to all these tools in the video description. This, by the way, this uh, fitting that I'm using is a quarter inch uh, by 28 TPI or 28 pitch, uh, 90 degree Zerk uh, fitting or grease fitting. Um, you know, up to you what you choose to use, 90, 45, 180 straight, um, you know, whatever suits your purpose best. But for me, on this Hyundai Santa Fe 2003, the 90 is going to be the best. Oh, one more thing I didn't uh, mention here is... Uh, on this, another reason why you use all those washers and why you don't want this all the way down flush with the surface of the ball joint is that you may not be able to get your, your uh, grease gun to fit on that because there won't be enough space between the metal, the base on the, on the metal and the actual fitting itself. So uh, yeah, be careful with that. And uh, if, that, if the 90 doesn't work for you, 45 will probably do the job. Um, but Again, you need to play with that. 90 worked for me with the washers, no problem at all. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need, and this is crucial, uh, is a tap for your uh, threading the actual hole that you've drilled. And you need the right tap, okay? Here we have a tap set and it's got three different taps. The first one is a taper, and it would not work in this uh, case at all. The second one is a plug, which sorta does the job, and the third one is a bottom, which is the one that you really need to use uh, to get this job done right. Difference being that the uh, tapers on the end, it's how they taper on the ends. 
you can see on, on the actual taper one that it's, it tapers like from about seven or eight threads down. And you look on the uh, plug one and you see that you get about four down before it actually starts giving you the true thread. And on the bottom tap, you get about two threads or maybe one and a half threads before it actually gives you the true size thread that you need. Well, you need this one because there's not a lot of clearance between the uh, uh, metal and the top of the ball joint. So when you go through, the ball joint uh, is just about right there. There's only about a quarter inch of, of total clearance there. So you need this uh, bottom tap to actually thread these, uh, this actual ball joint on this uh, stabilizing link. So again, this may differ with your part, but on the 2003 Hyundai Santa Fe, this is what I used. I needed, I needed a bottom tap. Nothing else would do the job. So uh, make sure you get yourself a bottom tap or maybe just buy this kit. I'll put a link to it in the uh, video description. And uh, then you have them all for whatever reason uh, in the future. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is drill out the actual um, ball joint on this uh, stabilizing link and uh, then we're going to tap it and uh, thread this uh, 90 fitting into it. After that's all done, then I'm going to grease it up. As you can see, I have my piece in, the, in my drill press. This is the drill here and the press above, of course. And I'm using 1 16th to start this and I'm going to punch a hole through the center and then slowly increase the di diameter of the drill bit till I get to 7 30 seconds. Um, so I'll video this for this side. I'm not going to show it for both sides. It's the same procedure anyway. Uh, one of the things you want to be cognizant of is not to go too deep and to uh, actually drill into the ball. You might put a little nick in the ball. I might put a little divot in, in, the, in the ball. It shouldn't affect performance at all, but just try not to drill into the ball. Just drill through the actual top cover, stop, and then change the bit. So let's do that. Again, you can do this with a regular hand drill. It's just nicer if you have a drill press. I do. Like I said, there's not very much clearance between the plate and the ball underneath it. So be careful with that. So we'll go to the next drill bit size and continue on till we get to 730 seconds. All right, there we are down to the 7.30 seconds drill bit hole. Now we're ready to tap it. I'm gonna use my bottom tap. I'm gonna put it in the drill press up above, press it down and hand uh, turn it. I'm disabling the drill so it cannot be turned on with my hand turning it by hand. So basically I'm just gonna lower it down like so and uh, then spin the pulleys by hand until it gets uh, threaded to the bottom. So let's do that. Again, I'm using the bottom tap. I'm going to turn it on to make sure I have it nice and straight in the chuck and then I'm going to turn it off and do it by hand. Nice and straight in the chuck. Lowering it down. Pressing it on and now I'm turning it by hand. And the chuck is slipping on me. Okay, I believe I have it threaded all the way down. I'm gonna blow it out here and uh, take a closer look. All right, you can see how nice those threads are, I hope. Looks like they're in focus, yeah. And they look really nice. Uh, I noticed the ball is right there and there's, like I said, not very much room between the top of this piece of metal and that ball right there. So basically, you know, I'll show you what happens if you thread the actual uh, 
the Zerk fitting or the, the grease feed fitting in there without the washers, you will hit the ball and you will restrict its movement. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here on the back end of this, uh, on the other side of this uh, link, but uh, I'm not going to show you that. You don't need to see it twice. So basically that's how you drill it out and then you tap it with the, with the uh, uh, bottom tap. And uh, I'm going to do that again. Then we're going to go and fit the actual uh, uh, grease fittings on there so you can see that. There's the threaded and uh, actual drilled out hole on the top of the stabilizing link. And you can see the ball joint right here. That's this area right there. And it's not very deep. That's 4.58 millimeters from the top of this piece of metal to the actual ball itself. I measured it with my calipers or 23 one twenty eighth of an inch. Uh, and in decimals and in inches, it'd be 0 .1790 inches. Well, problem with that is that our fitting is much deeper than that and you'll see that here and the, there's the uh, measurement I took and there's the actual fitting itself there we go and you can see there how much more fitting there is and there's space between the top of that piece of metal and the, and the ball but what happens if you if you uh, torque that down let me do that so without the washers or anything I'm just gonna tighten it down like so what happens is now that the, that fitting is now uh, pressing against the top of the ball and you got no mo range of motion you can't even move that stud anymore and if you were to put that on the car right now and went, went over a bump well something would have to go more than likely the top of the ball or the ball would be uh, damaged or scratched or the actual fitting itself would be squashed or damaged in some way at all too so what I'm going to do here is just take that fitting off back it up and then I'm going to put some washers the spacers in there there it is and now we got range of motion on that ball no problem at all you know as, as we should but we want that with the actual fitting in there so what I'm going to do first is I, I'm going to put a washer on it and then I'm going to put a, a, a two washers on it actually a lock washer and a washer and the only reason I'm using those two uh, is just because they're they're broader than two washers put together uh, that aren't locker, lock washers. So basically it gives me a, a, a little bit of a range and uh, how tight I can go. And remember, I want the orientation of this uh, grease fitting to be correct. In other words, I want it when it's on the car, which um, I'll show you in a second, I want it to be facing in the right direction so I can actually put the uh, grease uh, gun on it with the wheel still on the car. So let's see how much I can tighten this up. And I don't think I'm going to get there because I need this pointing all the way back at the camera and I'm not going to get there um, and I don't want to over tighten it and strip it. Mm, I don't know. I might be able to get there. Hold on. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that's about as far as it's going to go. Um, I'm going to take that lock washer off and use a regular washer on it. And that should give me the leeway I need to get to the right angle that I want. So lock washers off of there. Let's go with a regular washer. These are number six washers, by the way, in case you're wondering. And I'm just going to put them both together on here and screw it down. And look at that. Almost exactly where I want it. Just like that. And uh, when that is on the car, the tire will be uh, over here. And what that will allow me to do is turn the tire all the way to the, the uh, uh, passenger side. And then I can put my grease fit, uh, uh, fitting, uh, my gun on this uh, uh, stud or this fitting, no problem at all. So again, orientation is important. Make sure you get that right. Make sure you just put the piece next to the current piece prior to putting it on and making sure that you got the right angle on that. And I'm good and tight there. I actually may uh, use a little bit more or a little thicker uh, washer on that. But regardless, that's the point behind those washers. And I still check to see if I have range of motion and I do no problem at all. So that's not gonna hurt anything. And uh, I'm gonna do the same thing on the rear part, like on the other side, this side here. And then I'm gonna uh, show you how, how the uh, grease flows through the actual ball joint as well. Uh, as it how it does when it's when the boot is on All right, I've got my grease fitting oriented the right way. I've got the right spacer washers underneath it and I have full 
uh, range of motion on that ball joint without any issue whatsoever. So now I'm ready to, to uh, put some grease into it. So I'm going to put my grease gun on the fitting, lock it down, and then I'm going to show you the grease going through the actual joint. There it is there. So let's start pumping, see what kind of grease we get into it. And there it is coming out. So obviously we've got grease coming out of one, two, three, uh, four places on that ball joint. So that's great. So the whole full, full rear of the actual ball joint is now fully lubricated. And uh, the, if the boot was on here, it'd be getting full of grease as well. Now I don't recommend that you fill the boot uh, prior to putting it on the car because the boot will actually compress when you put it on the car. And if you put too much grease in there, there's a chance that you know, you'll burst the boot or you'll dislodge it. So wait until you have it on the car to actually fill it full of grease. Uh, I'm just doing this to show you how that's working and how it will fully lubricate that uh, bearing uh, nicely. So that's the uh, successful completion of that uh, 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 grease fitting or Zerk fitting on the uh, stabilizer links on a Hyundai Santa Fe 2003. Uh, keep, uh, keep it tuned in as I'm going to mount these stabilizer links on the actual uh, Santa Fe and uh, show you a few tricks on that. Uh, as well as, uh, again, remember all the tools and uh, supplies that I used on this video will be link below in the video description. So look in the video description below this video on YouTube and you'll see uh, all these supplies and tools I use. This is, uh, by the way, is uh, number two, uh, Molly grease. Uh, use whatever you'd like, but uh, I recommend the Molly and I do recommend uh, number two, which is the standard grease for most people put into these uh, bearings. Sorry, into these bearings, into these uh, ball joints. So again, stay tuned uh, and wait for my next video where I show you how I uh, fit these on the Hyundai Santa Fe 2003. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.